So, recently Red Hot Sonic has come back from a hiatus and chose none other than Sonic Eraser to be his first topic for his comeback episode. Very cool indeed, thank you man! Unfortunately, as with many things that come of age, my game hasn't aged too well either. This is best demonstrated by showing you a clip from Red Hot Sonic's video where he tries to play the game on a cartridge without save functionality. Actually, it will be interesting because the there are a few, quite a few bugs and glitches in this game, but it all seems to be the game itself. There was only one that I was able to find that's only hardware specific. What happened? But it might not do it on the Mega Drive 2 because it's actually music related. Find out in the very first act. Uh, uh, where's the text? Yeah, what? What? Exclamation <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh no, what the f*** is it doing? Oh, oh, I have not experienced this. <laughs> the oh. system is down, you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Mega Drive 2, what are you doing? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> So, what the hell is going on here? Let me break it down. To give you a very in a nutshell kind of answer, what you see here is the combination of like a billion different terrible design decisions from 13 years ago. Add my misunderstanding of how SRAM used to work back then, and that's how we ended up in this disaster. The first thing you might notice when you look at the text screen is that it's suspiciously similar to the default Sonic 1 lever select. Well, guess what? That's because it's nothing but a messy hack of set level select. That fact alone doesn't cause the bug, but I just had to point it out to give you an idea of what level of bullshittery we're dealing with here. I was really young. To understand what's actually going on here, let me introduce you to our first clue. Shortly before starting the text screen logic, the correct text to load is written to SRAM address 200007. This number is then immediately read again and put into another address, which is later used to load the actual text. So far so good. You got an ID and you use it to load something else. Nothing out of the ordinary here. But what if I told you that I lied to you? What if I told you there actually was an extra line of code I haven't shown you yet? Now I hopefully don't need to be your teacher to tell you that subtracting 1 from 0 will result in a negative number. But unfortunately, in the world of low-level computing, if you aren't careful with your negative numbers, something very terrible might happen. In this case, the problem was that the bit that loads the idea from SRAM will only work properly if SRAM is currently available. If it isn't, the value returned will always be zero. Or some other arbitrary, I don't know actually. In my testing it was always zero. The important part to take away here is that you cannot rely on data from your save files to be always correct. And if you don't handle such edge cases, everything will burn down. So the ID is zero, which then gets reduced by one, and because it's treated as an unsigned integer, that number will suddenly jump up to a whopping 255. And uh, I didn't write 255 text blocks. So the pointer points into some godforsaken realm beyond the scope of what it was supposed to handle. But hey, we're not done yet. What if I told you that, on top of writing absolutely dog shit code to handle the ID itself, the text rendering logic is equally terrible? The text blocks within the code are all terminated by FF, indicating the end of the text blocks and also when to wrap up the routine itself. Unfortunately, our little underflowing friend from earlier points towards some code section that just doesn't seem to have any hex FF inside. It just keeps on writing and writing, and writing, and writing, and writing, and writing until it eventually crashes. And there's no way to skip this. But here's the thing, this could have easily been prevented. As previously mentioned, this text screen is just a heck of the Sonic 1 level select, which always has the same size. There was no need to have a terminator, as the allocated space for the text was always the same size and it was already known. So even if we ended up in purgatory due to some faulty ID, 
the logic should have still stopped writing after it reached the known limit. But I didn't implement anything like that. So, uh, whoops. And there you have it! Two terrible design oversights due to my inexperience, resulting in one of the weirdest bugs I've ever seen. Funnily enough, I think this bug added some sort of piracy protection. Completely on accident. Let me tell you, reproduction cards for Sonic Hex have been a thing for a long time now. And many of them are insanely cheap. And also insanely terrible when it comes to their quality. Should you happen to buy an Eraser Repro card that doesn't contain a battery, you basically bought plastic junk, because the game won't let you progress without the save functionality. All because of that screen, or more specifically, all because of my terrible code. <laughs> so yeah, hope this video was insightful. And as a side note, I'm still working on that unplanned, but for some reason now happening, 7th public release, which I'll aim to be a reasonably sized quality of life update. I got a bunch of ideas written down, mostly small pet peeves that piled up over the years from watching other YouTubers. Nothing game breaking, but simply decisions that were questionable at best, finally getting some rework. No idea when I'm done with it, but expect a release early 2024. In the meantime, if you got any other bugs to report, or maybe feature requests, I don't know, feel free to post them in the comments down below and I will see what I can do. With that being said, I'm Selby. And I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.